Hey guys, give me one second. Well, good morning, everybody. And it's Pastor Randy here with Believers in Christ Fellowship and Made Free Church. I hope you guys are having a great morning. I know I am. Uh, every morning's a great morning when you wake up with Jesus, right? Amen. So today, you know, uh, we are diving into Revelation chapter 10. And uh, this chapter reveals just a glimpse of God's majestic plan, right? And and the importance of his word. You know, uh, just like a great adventure, a, adventure novel, the book of Revelation keeps us on the edge of our seats with imagery and symbolism, right? So let's open the pages of this chapter and uncover its truth that it holds, amen? So I do have a few uh, announcements to make. Uh, we are going to be doing our first church service uh, at our building, um, and I'll be uh, I'll be displaying that uh, next week. And and guys, uh, you know, uh, if you guys want to come, if you guys are in the area, please do. Um, and uh, you know, after that, after we're going to be feeding the homeless, right? Uh, we have a lot of homeless around our new building, and it's going to be pretty awesome. So uh, if you guys can, you know, uh, if you guys are in the area. Once we announce this, right, um, you know, uh, if you guys want to, you know, bring some food, some hot dogs some buns and stuff like that and waters, pop, whatever, you know what I mean? You guys can do that. Uh, but I'll be releasing that uh, in uh, in uh, starting on Monday. You know, every day I'm going to be talking about it, and releasing it on Facebook and all social media, stuff like that. So you guys will have everything. So. Uh, also, I've got a few books that, that are out there on uh, Amazon. You know, I got Reformation Revived, which talks about the Reformation. You can get that on Kindle and paperback. Also, I have the Book of John, which you can also get on uh, either Kindle or paperback. Both these books are available on Amazon.com. And I do have a men's devotional. It's called A, a Warrior's Heart. And... Uh, um, you know, this devotional can be for women, but I'm also writing one called A Soldier in God's Army for both men and women. Um, but uh, the, the Warrior's Heart, man, it, man, you could only get it on Kindle. Go out and get that. It's such an amazing, amazing devotional for men. Amen. Um, and uh, what else? That um, You can only get that on Kindle. It's only five bucks. All the proceeds from all the, all the books and the devotional go right back into our street church ministry. You know, uh, we go out every week and we feed the homeless and we try to give them hygiene and stuff like that. So, guys, if you guys have the opportunity, we are a 501c3, uh, a nonprofit. And so we can give you a tax deductible donation as well. So, please, we offer that as well. So, you guys want a tax deductible donation, please let us know. Um, and we have, you know, you email me, you know, uh, email me um, that, uh, you know, that be able to, to you know, um, do that. Right. Um, give me, oh, OK. Dang it. Dang it. Dang it. Dang it. I messed up. <laughs> anyway, uh, you can email me at ChristLife777 at iCloud.com. That's ChristLife, C-H-R-I-S-T, Life, L-I-F-E at 777 at iCloud.com. All right. Well, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just come before you. We thank you for your word. We thank you for this time, Lord. Just ask, Lord, that you get this lowly preacher out of the way, Lord, and let your word go forward. As we read Revelation 10, let, it, let us bring us hope and not fear. Lord, let us bring us a deeper faith and belief and a deeper intimate relationship with you, Heavenly Father, as we go through the book of Refer uh, Revelation 
uh, systematically, Lord. I, we love you and we worship you. And thank you for all that you do in Jesus' name. Amen. So, guys, also, we are on Apple. We're on iTunes. We're, I mean, Apple iTunes. We're on Spotify. We're on Deezer. We're on CastBox. Uh, we are on iHeartRadio. We're on Amazon, Amazon Music. So go check us out. Uh, Believers in Christ Fellowship as well as Reformed Pastor. Um, and no, I'm not a Calvinist. And I'm not, you know, I'm Reformed from the Reformed. That's why I kept it. It's just a little stick at the at, at the at the new Calvinists that are out there. Anyway, <laughs> I have a lot of friends that are Calvinists, so it's not like I hate them because I don't hate them. I love them, but you know, it's a little stick to them. Anyway, it's kind of funny, but whatever. So Revelation ten verse one. Then I saw another mighty angel uh, coming down from heaven, wrapped in a cloud. Uh, with a rainbow over his head and his face was like the sun and his legs like the pillar of fire and he held a scroll little scroll opened in his hand and he set his right foot on the sea and his left foot on the land and he called out with a loud voice like a lion roaring he called out the seven thunders sounded and when the seven thunders sounded I was about to write what I heard. Uh, I was about to write, but what I heard, but I heard a voice from heaven saying, seal up the seven thunders have said, and do not write them down. And the angel whom I, whom I saw standing on the sea and on the land raised his right hand to heaven and swore by him who lives forever and ever, who created the heaven and is what in it, it, the earth and what is in it, and the sea that is what in it, and that there would be no more delay. But the days, but in the days of the trumpet call to be sounded by the seventh angel, the mystery of God would be fulfilled, just as he announced to his servants, the prophets. Then the voice that I heard from heaven spoke to me again, saying, Go. Take this scroll um, that is uh, open in the hand of the angel who was standing on the sea and land. So I went to the angel and told him to give me the little scroll. And he said to me, take it. It will make, uh, take, take and eat it. It will make your stomach bitter, but your mouth, but in your mouth, it'll be sweet as honey. And I took the little scroll from the hand of the angel and ate it. And it was sweet as honey by my mouth. But when I ate it, my stomach was made bitter. And I was told, you must again prophesy about many people and nations and languages and kings. Amen. Amen. And so in Revelation 10 verse 1. second there we go holding uh a small open scroll in his in his hand right that the angelic figure stands as 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 a symbol of god's sovereignty right and, and his power and and the pivotal role that heavenly messengers play in carrying out his purpose like you know the the description right that the, the description of the angel leaves a powerful impression on you know, on the reader's mind right his appearance is nothing short of awe-inspiring right reflecting on his divine nature and the importance of his message that he bears the imagery serves as a reminder of the vastness of god's creation and the celestial beings that serve him right that the presence of the angels emphasizes a the otherworldly nature of events unfolding in the book of Revelation, right? The, the, the angel's grasp on the little skull is a symbol of God's divine revelation unfolding plan and, and his unfolding plan for humanity, right? The, the scroll's small size signifies the, the focus and specific nature of the message contained within it. The scroll is open, suggesting that it contains... That his contents and it, it, it can that can 
<laughs> the, the contents are no longer concealed, but now are accessible and meant to be understood. Man, I just get so tongue-tied when it comes to reading the word and, and preaching. Ah, so funny. Anyway, what makes this passage even more intriguing is the description of the scroll's taste, right? The, 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 the text note that the scroll is both sweet and bitter when, it, when eaten, right? The duality of taste holds a deep symbolism, right? The sweetness represents the promises and blessings and joy that come from embracing God's word and his plan. It reflects the comfort and reassurance that believers find in God's promises of salvation and ultimate victory, right? That the bitterness of the scroll alludes to its challenges, trials, and sacrifices that accompany the faithful journey, right? Uh, it reminds us that that following God's path is not always easy. It might involve hardship, persecution, and stepping out of our comfort zone. It, it, this interplay of, of sweet and bitter captures the dynamic nature of the Christian walk, a journey marked both with moments of, of, of exaltation and seasons of testing. Revelation chapter 10, verse 1 offers valuable lessons for believers today, right? Firstly, it emphasizes the significance of God's messengers conveying his message, right? Angels, as his messengers, play a crucial role in carrying out God's divine plan. And likewise, as believers, where we are also entrusted with the message of the gospel, right? It, 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 called to be messengers of hope, love, and redemption to a world in need. And secondly, you know, the imagery of the open scroll reminds us the accessibility of God's word. The scriptures are open to all who seek to understand and apply it in their lives. The message of salvation, guidance, and wisdom is available, right? Transcending cultural and temporal boundaries, right? And lastly, the contrast of sweetness and bitterness, right, in the scroll's taste challenges us to embrace the entirety of the Christian experience. Just as John, you know, was called to ingest the scroll with its mixtures of flavors, we are called both to accept both the blessing and challenges that come our way in our faith journey. In, in doing so, we grow in resilience and character and dependence on God's grace, right? It's such a powerful thing, man. God is so majestic. He's so awe-inspiring. And, 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 and when we go through the book of Revelation, it's going to get deep and it's going to get real scary. But for the Christian, no, it's, it's a message of hope. A message of hope that people who hear uh, people... You know, not a lot of not a lot of preachers preach on the book of Revelation. Not not that, you know, you, you rarely hear it in, 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 in today's churches. And the reason why we're doing it is because for the Christian, it's a message of hope. Hope that others will hear this message and God will draw them in and they get and, and they and they're offered the gift of salvation themselves. And that's why Revelation, you know, and it tells about the coming of the prophecies of about what's to come. And we're seeing that today, guys. We're seeing that prophecy being fulfilled. So, and and, and uh, uh, I hope you, I hope you don't see this as me being, you know, uh, a doom and gloom guy, but that you see this as, you know, um, that that you see this as comfort because you, your your assurance of salvation is already set, in the hope that others around you will get saved. That's the importance. Uh, in Revelation uh, chapter 10, verse 1 introduces the mighty angel of, and, and the symbolism of the little scroll that he holds. And this verse invites us to reflect on the awe-inspiring nature of divine messengers, the accessibility of God's word, and the call to embrace both sweet and bitter aspects of our faith journey. You know, as we navigate life's twists and turns, let us embrace, let us not embrace, but let us be encouraged by the by the assurance of God's sovereign plan being carried out, right? And his messengers continue to guide us towards his ultimate purpose. So in Revelation chapter 10, verse 2 introduces the mysterious element 
of the he heavenly scene, the seven, the seven thunders, right? Now, now, while this passage is brief, it offers a glimpse into the depth and complexity of God's plan for humanity, right? Revealing, right, that there are aspects of his purpose that remain hidden from our understanding, right? And as John observes, hold on, as John observes, right, the, the, the mighty angel descending from heaven, he witnesses another remarkable phenomenon, the seven thunders uttering their voices. Now, however, they it, what, what, what they actually said is not disclosed to us, right? John is about to write down their words, but he was instructed not to reveal what they have said, right? This unique narrative uh, uh, a choice leaves the readers intrigued and curious about the nature of the seven thunders message it, it, the, the fact that the contact of the seven thunders message is not revealed underscores the idea that there are certain aspects of god's plan that remain beyond human comprehension right our you know our, our journey of faith we we are reminded right that while god reveals much uh, to us through his words his and his messengers right there are mysteries that are transcend our often uh, our finite understanding you know this serves as a humbling reminder of god's transcendence and the limits of human knowledge right that the silence regarding the seven thunders message also teaches us to trust in god's divine kingdom or excuse me divine wisdom right sometimes you know our desire for knowledge and understanding can lead us to seek answers to questions that God in his infinite wisdom chooses not to reveal, right? This passage has encouraged us to rely on God's guidance, right? Even when we don't have all the answers, it reminds us that God's plan plans are perfect and that his timing is impeccable. You know, Revelation chapter 10 verse verses two offers several important lessons for believers today right one humility right the, the mystery of the seven uh, thunders reminds us that you know that that we have a limited perspective as human beings right it humbles us before the greatness and complexity of god's plans right you know that it, it's it's a it's this humility invites us to approach our faith with openness and willingness to learn rather than with a sense of entitlement to know all the answers, right? Also, too, is trust, right? You know, that the undisclosed message of the seven thunders teaches us to trust in God's sovereignty and wisdom, right? Uh, may we encounter, we, we, we may encounter uh, situations in life that, 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 that we're, we don't fully understand the whys and hows, but our trust in God's character remains unwavering. And then three is obedience, right? You know, John's obedience is, is, is not revealing the content of the seven thunders message reminds us of the importance of obeying God's instructions when they seem mysterious or challenging, right? Our obedience reflects our submission to God's will and recognition to his authority. And then four is focus on what's revealed, right? So while, while, while we might be curious about the hidden aspects of God's plan, the emphasis should be on what God has revealed to us through his word, right? Our faith should not be, our faith should be anchored in the foundational truths of the gospel and the principles that guide our lives. You know, in, in Revelation 2, the seven thunders stand as a symbol of hidden mysteries within God's plan that are beyond human comprehension, right? This passage invites us to brace humility, trust in God's wisdom and obey his guidance and focus on his revealed truth of his word. You know, as we navigate our journey of faith, let us find comfort in the knowledge that while there are aspects that we may not fully understand, God remains unchanging and faithful anchored of our own story in revelation chapter uh, 10 verses 3 and 4 presents 
us with the unique contrast of elements, right? The solemn oath taken by the angel and the baffling utterances of the seven thunders, right? Uh, these verses offer an insight into the certainty of God's promises and mysteries that surround his divine plan. You know, in, in verse three, the mighty angel in his right hand and in, 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 uh, raises his right hand to heaven and takes a solemn oath. This action emphasizes the unshakable nature of the promise that he's about to make. You know, swearing by the one who lives forever and ever, the angel highlights the eternal and unwavering character of God himself. The oath is a declaration uh, uh, that there is that 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 there will be no more delay. Right, the proclamation carries a sense of urgency and finality, suggesting it, that the the that the the the, the accumulation uh, uh, of God's plan is rapid. The culmination, excuse me, of of God's plan is rapidly approaching. It serves as a reassurance to believers that God's timing is intentional and precise. His promises are certain to be fulfilled. Right, verse four introduces uh, uh, introduces the seven thunders. Right, who had, who had previously uttered their voices. Right, however, just like verse two, the content of their message remains undisclosed. John is instructed not to write down what the seven thunders said. The secrecy invokes a sense of wonder and intrigue. Right, leaving the readers to ponder the nature of their message and its significance, right? The seven thunders hidden uh, uh, hidden in their utterances, right? Remind us that, you know, God, God's plan often contains elements beyond our human comprehension, right? The mysteries are not meant to, to frustrate us, but rather to inspire awe and reference for the infallible wisdom of God, right? So in Revelation chapter three, excuse me, chapter three, uh, verses, I mean, chapter 10, <laughs> Revelation chapter 10, verses uh, three and four carries important lessons for us today. See, the angel's oath underscores the unchanging nature of God's promises. You know, as believers, you know, we can find comfort in knowing that the God we serve is faithful and his plans are are certain to come to fruition you know when facing uncertainty we can trust in his promises and his perfect timing you know and the de declaration of uh no more delay teaches us about divine timing right while we might not we might desire uh immediate answers or results in god's timing it, it is purpose it, god's timing is purposeful and aligns with his overreaching plan. You know, patience and trust in his timing are vital aspects to our faith journey. You know, and in embracing the revealed, you know what I mean? Uh, in, in, in the, the mystery uh, that surrounding the seven thunders reminds us that there are, are aspects of God's plan that we may not fully comprehend. Instead of, of becoming discouraged, you know, by the unknown, we, 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 are, we can embrace the mystery as an opportunity to grow in humility and reliance in God's wisdom. And just as John was told, you know, not to write down the seven thunders message, there, there might be times when God asks us to hold certain truth close to our hearts without fully disclosing them to others. This underscores the importance of discernment and obedience and sharing spiritual insights. And Revelation, you know, uh, 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 chapter 10, verses 3 and 4, invites us to navigate the tensions between what is revealed and what remains hidden in God's plan. You know, while we, are, we have the privilege of knowing God's revealed truth in his word, we must also respect the mystery that he chooses to keep hidden right so in in revelation chapter 10 verses 3 and 4 unveils a scene of divine certainty and hidden ministries you know that the angel's solemn oath 
and the undisclosed utterance of the seven thunders reminds us of the unchanging nature of God's promises and the awe-inspiring depth of his wisdom, right? As we journey, you know, uh, uh, in faith, may we find comfort and solace in God's assurance and trusting in his timing and approach the mysteries of his plan with humility and reference and reverence, right? Um, you know, and then we, we're going to go to Revelation uh, chapter 10, verses 5 and 7, which contains a declaration that reverberates with both anticipation and significance. There shall be no delay longer, right? There shall be no, there shall be delay no longer, right? This verse is illuminates the, the culmination of, of God's divine timeline reminding us of the urgency and purpose embedded with his plan, right? In, in verse six, the angel who stands with one foot on the sea and the other on the land and his hands towards heaven and swears an oath by the creator of all things, this solemn affirmation declares that there will be delay no longer. This phrase, uh, this phrase captures a powerful shift in unfolding God's plan, a transition from waiting for fulfillment, anticipation to realization, uh, from anticipation to real realization. You know, the, the, the declaration, no more delay, indicates that the time of God's ultimate judgment and fulfillment is drawing near, right? That it's affirmation of, of, of the imminence of the events prophesied in Revelation. This proclamation calls believers to be diligent, prepared, and attuned to the signs of the times. And we're seeing that today, guys. We're seeing the signs of the time, right? That declaration, no more delay, has already, it, it's already coming, right? It's already coming, guys. So prepare. So verse uh, 6 also contains the proclamation, time shall be no longer. This phrase is often translated, there shall be delay no longer, right? It carries a significance, right? You know, while, while it does not, it's not, it's not implying the ending of time itself, it signifies the apex of a certain period, but emphasizing the finality of God's divine plan, right? The announcement that, Time shall be no longer speaks of, of the ultimate sovereignty of God over time. It's a reminder that in all moments of history are under his control and are working towards his predetermined, uh, predestinal uh, uh, pl uh, plan and purpose, right? You know, the, the truth encourages us, encourage believers to, to take, to place their trust in God's overreaching plan, right? When, 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 when the world seems uncertain and chaotic, and we're seeing that today, the world is very uncertain and chaotic, right? And in verse seven reinforces the idea of the heaven, uh, of the idea of the hidden mysteries within God's plans, right? The angel's words pointed to a secret that was revealed to God's servants and the prophets. This mystery, mysterious aspect of God's plan is associated with the gospel and the fulfillment of his redemptive purpose, right? <clears throat> the mystery of, of the mystery of God as referred to in, in, in this verse underscores that, you know, even as God's plans unfold, there always will be an aspect, right? beyond our complete understanding, right? This invites us to walk by faith, trusting in God's wisdom that surpasses our own, right? It's a call to, to humility, acknowledging that while we may, seek knowledge, we may seek knowledge and understanding, there will always be an element uh, of mystery in our journey, right? You know, so, you know, Revelation chapter 10 verses five and seven offers lessons again, you know, uh, for believers today, right? The di the declaration of no more delay serves as a reminder of the urgency of our faith, right? It encourages us to live with a sense of purpose, knowing that God's plan is moving towards its fulfillment, 
You know, our, our lives should reflect the anticipation of Christ's return and the establishment of his kingdom and the proclamation that time shall be it reminds us to trust when we can't see the entire picture. We can have confidence that God's timing is perfect. This truth is should alleviate all anxiety about the future. You know, and uh, the reference to the mystery of God reminds us that, you know, uh, uh, there is there, there will be always aspects of God's plan that we may not fully comprehend. Right. This call it, 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 this calls us to cultivate hum humility. Right. Acknowledging the limits of our understanding and approach our faith journey with a sense of wonder and curiosity. You know, in, in a world that's often values knowledge and certainty, you know, verses five and seven highlights the importance of faith while seeking knowledge is valuable. Don't get me wrong. Right. Our faith ultimately rests in God's character and his promises, even when we don't have all the answers. So. You know, uh, Revelation chapter 10 verses 5 through 7 paints a picture of, of the significant moment in God's plan, right? A moment when delay ceases and the ultimate fulfillment of his uh, purpose draws near, right? That, that this emphasis uh, uh, of the journey, that this, em this emphasizes the urgency of our faith the sovereignty of God over time and the humility required to embrace the mysteries of his plan. As we navigate our faith journey, may we find hope and assurance in God's plan is, you know, that, 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 that God's plan is unfolding according to his perfect timing and that our role is to remain faithful, prepared and attuned to his guidance. In uh, Revelation chapter 10, verses 8 through 11, unveils a symbolic act with, with implications. You know, John is directed to eat the scroll held by the mighty angel. And this scene illustrates the intimate connection between believers and God's word. It conveys both the sweetness of the divine revelation and the challenges of the inerrant inherent you know the cha challenges you know that that come with in proclaiming the message uh, that it contains right you know the verse 9 the angel instructs john to take the little scroll from his hands and eat it you know this command might seem unusual at first but it carries deep spiritual meaning the act of of eating is associated with assimilation or an internal internalization and making something a part of oneself, right? In that case, John is being called to internalize and fully embrace the message of God's word, right? So John obeys, you know, the angel's command and he finds the scroll taste, that tastes sweet in his mouth, yet it's bitter in his stomach. The duality of taste mirrors a multifaceted nature of God's word and our Christian experience. Right. The sweetness reflects the joy and fulfillment found in embracing God's word. Right. The, the just as honey is is delightful to the taste, the truths contained in scripture bring comfort, encouragement and spiritual nourishment to the to believers. This sweetness is the assurance of God's love, promises and salvation. Right. On the other hand, the bitterness signifies the challenges and sacrifices that often accompany the proclamation of the, God's message. You know, just as uh, aspects of life's journey uh, are bitter, sharing uh, the gospel might lead to opposition, rejection and, and discomfort. The bitterness reminds believers that being messengers of God's word requires perseverance, resilience and the willingness to face adversity. You know, in verse 10, John further describes how he took the scroll from the angel, the angel's hands and swallowed it, right? You know, this action emphasizes the act of fully accepting and internalizing the message. 
by ingesting the scroll, John is demonstrating his commitment to embracing God's word and making it an integral part of his being. You know, and that's what we need to be doing. We need to take God's word, internalize it, and, and make it an integral part of our being, right? You know, and, and, and verse 11 uh, brings forth a, 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 a crucial aspect of the scene. John is told that he must prophesy about many people's nations and, and kings. This underscores the mission of the believer to share the message of God's word with the world just as john was called to be a messenger we too are called to proclaim the gospel and its power to people from all what well, excuse me all walks of life and you know and that's what we're supposed to be doing you know the gospel and its power think about that right so in Revela revelation revelation uh, uh verses 8 through 11 uh, Revelation 10, uh, 8 through 11, offers significant insights uh, for believers today, right? Intimacy in God's word, number one. You know, the act of eating the scroll symbolizes the, the, the intimate connection between believers, right? That, 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 that believers should have with God's word, right? It's a reminder to it, eternalize and meditate on scripture, allowing it to shape our thoughts and actions and character Two, embracing the sweet and bitter, you know, just as John experienced both sweetness and bitterness from the scroll, our faith journey may contain moments of joy and challenges, right? Embracing both aspects equips us to walk faithfully with God through all circumstances, right? Three courage and proclamation. You know, the, the charge to prophesy about many peoples underscores the importance of sharing the gospel. It encourages believers to step out in faith, overcome fear, and boldly declare God's truth to others. And four, uh, 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 being a messenger, right? Just as John was entrusted with the scroll, believers are trusted with the message of salvation. This responsibility encourages us to live lives that reflect the message that we carry and to extend God's love to those around us. You know, Revelation uh, uh, 10 verses 8 through 11 paints a vivid picture of John's symbolic act and eating the scroll, right? This scene illuminates uh, the profound connection between believers and God's word. It highlights the sweetness and bit and challenges uh, 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 of embracing and pro and, and the pro proclaiming its message. We internalize God's words, so let us be empowered to walk faithfully, sharing the message of hope, redemption, and transformation with the world with with a world in need. You know, you know, as we can, you know, as we conclude the exploration of uh, Revelation ten, we find ourselves immersed in the captivating tapestry of symbolism and divine messages, right? The, the, the chapter's intricate imagery from the mighty angel to the sweet and bitter scroll, you know, beckons us to dive deeper into the mysteries of God's plan, right? It, it, at its heart, Revelation 10, you know, calls believers to engage with God's word, embrace the multifaceted nature and heed the call to be messengers of a truth. That means really opening up your word and really getting to know your savior. And, you know, I always listen to the gospels guys, you know, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you know what I mean? Um, I always listen to those. I mean, I go through, you know, weeks where I'll listen to one book over and over and over and over again. You know, and sometimes it'll be like three or four months that I won't leave, you know, that one book you know, Matthew or, you know, Mark or whatever, you know what I mean? Because there's so much meat in it and there's so much to get out of it. And it's ever changing because it's the living word of God, but we're to gain, we're to engage in his word. We're to pick it up or listen to it on the Bible app or whatever we got to do, but we're supposed to engage it and we're supposed to live that out. Right. So the mighty angel uh, descending from heaven symbolizes God's powerful messengers who played a crucial role in carrying out his divine plan. You know, this serves as, as a reminder that believers too are called to be messengers sharing 
gospel sweet promises and preparing for challenges that it might entail opening the the open scroll both sweet and bitter mirrors the, the varying dimensions of our faith journey right it, it's sweetness captures the joy the comfort the fulfillment found in god's promises while its bitterness reflects the trial sacrifice and opposition that accompany the proclamation of his word right they, this duality teaches us to embrace both aspects of faith cultivating resilience and hope the seven thunders you know uh with their undisclosed message right underlines the limits of human understanding and the mystery built into god's plans the recognition invites us to trust in god's wisdom to hold our to hold steadfast uh to reveal truth and humbly accept that there are always aspects beyond our comprehension you know the oath of of the oath and declaration of time no longer reminds us of this of, of the certainty of god's promises and the urgency of living out our faith this this prompts believers to align our lives with god's promise trusting that his, that his timing is perfect and his plan is unfolding in ways beyond our perception and finally the act of eating the the scroll while symbolic it reflects the intimacy that we are called to have with god's word internalizing a truth equips us to navigate life's challenges with the sweetness of god's promises and the strength to endure bitter moments the messages uh the messengers of the gospel right uh we, we are entrusted uh we are entrusted with sharing its message with a, a world hungry for hope you know uh, and, and there are people out there who are hungry for hope. I just saw a uh, 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 an agnostic guy who who came to Christ because he read different. Uh, he read Buddhism. He read Islam, and 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 they all pointed to Jesus. And and he's like, well, if these guys were hold hold Jesus in this high regard, then there is something to this, you know. So he put it. So so he he put he decided to put his faith into christianity and, and into and he does you know he god god got it god called him out man and he responded that's the cool thing and we should always we we, we should always be like understanding that you know what I mean? we should always reflect the intimacy that intimacy that we are called to have with god's word right and, you know uh, uh um you know this is what we're supposed to be we're supposed to be in god's word you know we're sp not not to defend the gospel there's some people that that that's the, the the mission that god that's the purpose that god gave them is defend the gospel to debate it you know what i mean i i don't debate things you know what i mean um i i don't even really call out false teachers and stuff like that which we're commanded to do um because that's not the purpose of believers in Christ. It's not the purpose of made free church. That's not the purpose of what we do. You know, our purpose is to, 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 to systematically teach you guys the gospel. You know, that that's our purpose. So, <laughs> all right, guys, we are going to be ending this, right? I know this has been a while. Revelation 10 invites us to engage with its rich symbolism. Right, drawing us into a deeper understanding of God's plan and our role in it. You know, this chapter bridges the gap between the divine and the human, right? Offering insights into the complexities of faith and the assurance of God's promises and the mission to proclaim the truth. As we journey through the pages of Revelation and on uh, uh, and our own lives, you know, may we embrace the sweet and bitter trust in God's wisdom and boldly proclaim his message of love and redemption to a world that so needs it right now heavenly father thank you for your word thank you for this time lord we thank you for all that you do you're such an amazing dad and thank you for revealing the truths and and hiding the ones that are beyond our comprehension God has just come before you and we just lay down our lives at the foot of your cross and you out and ask and ask you to guide us and direct us um, in today's life events. 
Lord, that, that that we'll have unwavering faith that some things we don't understand and some things we do. And we love you and we worship you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, guys, God bless.